of me because it was something that has always been sitting with me. I had a bunch of writings in my closet that I just didn't know what to do with. I would always buy memoirs, biographies, self-help books, so I thought it would be great for me to do my own. The title of the book, Reflections of Me, came about because everything that's within the book is a reflection of me, from the way I speak, from the way I act, from everything. The friends I hang around, the friends I used to hang around, is a reflection of who I am and why I am the way I am. The book is about, basically about my life. It's about how I went through certain situations, how I overcame them, and how I would never ever go back to those situations. Well, coming out, uh, I didn't actually come out. It was sort of a, your parents know whether you're gay or straight, they just want you to tell them. So it's basically, I didn't have a, like a sit down conversation with, hey mom, dad, they already knew, they told me. Growing up, I always knew. Till this day, if I meet a female, we're more of a brother-sister type thing. Like, there's no attraction, so it's been from day one. I grew up as a fatherless child. I seen my father once. I was 12. I remember him taking me to the mall, buying me a pair of shoes, bringing me home, kissing me on my forehead, and I've never seen him again. The book was therapeutic. It is helpful in a way, but it's more so therapeutic to a lot of anger that I had built up, a lot of things I wanted to say that I couldn't say because I had no one to talk to. Thousand Three Gated Hollywood is one of my favorite chapters. It talks about a tad bit on the life in the gay life in DC because that's the only place I lived. Um, I had a group of friends I used to hang with all the time. We used to go to the clubs together, we used to wear each other's clothes, we used to sell each other's houses. But then they started meeting people in the life and joining houses and just becoming plastic. And I called it 2000 Gay Hollywood because that's basically what it is. It's a like gay Hollywood, but it's not realistic. So I lost friends during that time period because they joined these houses and they changed. They tried to become what wasn't real and I just couldn't associate with that. The leak came about when I met this guy on Twitter. He was also an independent author. He had a lot of Twitter followers so I thought it would be cool. He offered me advice or whatever. So we exchanged numbers and we became cool. So eventually attraction came and with the attraction came me trusting him and sending him my manuscript which was unedited at the time. So then things started happening for me and they wasn't happening for him and mind you we're both independent authors so he started calling me names calling me all types of names like stuck up I think I'm this I think I'm that and then he just I'm gonna destroy you believing in yourself is something that I'm still dealing with because I often have to remind myself that I have a lot of things going for myself but I also have to remember that it's not going to happen when I want them to happen. But I have to still keep working towards them. I have to encourage myself every day that it's going to get better. Just keep working. I hope that my book will help someone. That's the purpose of me writing the book is to help someone. Because I read people books and I'm inspired. And I take certain knowledge from what they said and put it towards my own life. So that was my sole purpose of helping someone. You can expect juiciness. Um all the tea per se um just realness because it's transparent and that's my main focus is to be transparent <laughs>